Our next speaker today is Dr. Mohamed Shafi. Um, he has a PhD from the University of Alberta in 2016 in the field of payment and instrumentation, non-destructive testing, and structural health monitoring. He's an adjunct professor at York University, and he's a research officer at the Government of Canada's uh, National Research Council, NRC. Welcome, Dr. Mohamed Shafi. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to this presentation. Let me begin by thanking ITE for uh, giving us this opportunity today. Uh, and I really enjoyed uh, Sino's talk about uh, overall, like the pavements in Canada and what are the challenges. And he mentioned about climate change, uh, which, is, which is like the top priority uh, across the country indeed. And this presentation today uh, focuses on climate change effect on pavement design. So I would like to put probably a climate lens on pavement design and how it can impact uh, the roads of, of the future. So uh, according to uh, Canada's Changing Climate Report, which was published in 2019, uh, climate has warmed and it will continue to warm further in future. Warming rate in Canada is unfortunately double the global average. Uh, so probably this is uh, one of your questions, why climate change in Canada is, is uh, faster than the rest of the world. And this is most likely because of the uh, ice. It's because of uh, decreasing amount of ice that we have, and it will increase like the sunshine and uh, absorption. And that's why like uh, climate change in Canada is going to be faster than the rest of the world because of losing all those uh, ices in the Arctic area. Because of that, there is very different climate futures for the country depending on the emission scenarios. Either they are low, high, and what's the uh, policy of reducing GHG across the world, uh, which is going to impact uh, how climate is going to change uh, in Canada and the rest of the world. Uh, at the same time, we have increasing demand on our built infrastructures. It's attributed to climate change. For example, here you can see some photos showing the wildfire in Fort McMurray in 2016 and flood in Toronto. So under all these uh, natural uh, disasters, uh, there is an increasing demand on, on the transportation infrastructures. Uh, as I said, climate change in Canada is, is, a, uh, is an important issue. And it's been documented in the uh, Changing Climate Report 2019. And according to that report, we have to really make sure that uh, the scenarios that we need to consider are reliable. And the data that we are using to design our infrastructures, especially today we're talking about pavement, are accurate enough in order to uh, do a relative impact study on the pavement performance. So as you can see here in these two photos, uh, flooding and wildfires are going to be uh, more frequent down the road. And that means there is an increasing demand on our transportation infrastructures to carry ever increasing load and uh, new uh, climatic stressors on the pavement uh, infrastructures. So here you can see uh, overall what's the temperature increase trend uh, since two, uh, 1948 until 2016 in different seasons of the year. For example, you can see how winter warming was more uh, significant compared to the uh, spring, summer and fall and Northern Canada on average experienced 2.4 degrees Celsius temperature rise. Uh, however, uh, for, for, for global temperature rise, we can uh, say that it's been around 0.8 degrees Celsius. Climate data projection is a science as, as we all know. So uh, it's not very easy uh, to obtain projected climate change data. You definitely need climatic models and you need to use supercomputers to convert those future possible greenhouse gas emission concentrations to some um, temperature, humidity, uh, moisture, and other uh, environmental factors. So as I mentioned earlier, depending on the assumptions for uh, GHG emissions, for example, representative concentration pathway 8.5, which is the business as usual scenario, 
or more uh, moderate scenarios like RCP 4.5, 6, or low emission scenario like RCP 2.6, they all define different futures. And uh, based on, on, on how much GHG is being uh, emitted, then we have to consider different scenarios to be prepared for different types of uh, future climates. For example, some of the outputs from projected climate change data tells us that until year 2100, probably under the business as usual scenario or RCP 8.5, Canada will experience uh, up to 6.3 degrees Celsius temperature rise, whereas globally it's going to be 4.7. And also under RCP 4.5 or RCP 2.6, you can see that this rise will be uh, less. So around like 3.2 or 1.8 degrees Celsius. However, uh, how pavement designers, practitioners and transportation professionals consider climate in the pavement design. So as we all know, um, Ashton 1993 is probably the most common way that people around the world and North America right now design their pavements. I'll talk about the MEPDG maybe uh, in future slides, but just want to highlight how uh, Ashton 1993 looks at climate. So again, uh, a quick look at the history here. Ashton 1993 was developed uh, based on ASHO road test empirical regression models that were developed using uh, the, this uh, test road. It was done probably in the 50s, 1950s, and it was really a landmark in highway and, and bridge design because it provided uh, probably the first generation of pavement performance database. It was composed of different test tracks, flexible and rigid. Here you can see uh, some, some photos and also the approximate location of the road test, which was uh, near Chicago. And uh, the city was called Ottawa. It was in Illinois, uh, not, not the Ottawa in Ontario. So here you can see some uh, climatic uh, parameters that were collected during uh, those experiments. The average mean summer temperature for that experiment was 24.4 uh, degrees Celsius. And the average mean winter temperature though was minus 2.77 degrees Celsius. The precipitation, on the other hand, was around um, 864 millimeters. So all the regression equations, all the algorithm that were developed based on ASHO road test, which is now being widely used around the world, like uh, called ASHO 1993 method, are all valid uh, for this specific climate. I'm not going to talk about uh, variability in materials, how traffic has been changed over the years and all that. Probably those are very important topics uh, which should be uh, discussed in other presentations. But my focus here is mostly about climate. So not only like climate is variable from one location to another location, our climate change is going to uh, even make the, uh, I mean, uh, pavement design more sophisticated and more complex. If we just rely on, on the equations that were developed for that specific location, for that specific climate, that can be misleading enough and probably lead to uh, some uh, design issues. Uh, for example, underperforming roads and uh, non-durable pavements because uh, climate especially is changing and in Northern regions, as I mentioned, that changes even faster. So, let me take you uh, to another factor, which is the frost depth in actual road test. So here you can see frost depth under flexible pavement and on the rigid pavement during those years. So obviously with climate change, frost depth is also going to, uh, I mean, uh, change. And uh, we've seen that like the uh, frost season has been uh, affected. It's now shorter pretty much. Uh, so that can impact the, uh, response of the pavement, how, how subgrade and unbound layers are going to be affected by the level of saturation. Uh, so that, that, that's a very important thing for cold region uh, pavement, the frost depth and how thawing is going to impact the behavior of the pavement. So again, uh, climate change is going to uh, impact that factor combined with the 
increase of surface temperature, change in the dynamic modulus. So as, as you can see here, it's a very complex uh, design. It's, it's not just uh, one or two parameters. It's, just, it's not just uh, temperature or precipitation. There are multiple parameters involved uh, here. So empirical equations like ASHRAE 1993, probably next time that you are using those uh, models when you are trying to uh, calculate your structural number, uh, probably uh, maybe you have to really uh, pay attention to, to these effects, especially climate and climate change. But fortunately, there has been a paradigm shift and uh, Sina mentioned about that as well. Uh, any PDG or mechanistic empirical design has been really helpful because it, it has different components, including environmental uh, factors. So in the MEPDG, which has been around since um, early 2000, environmental uh, effects are, are basically indirectly affecting material properties that, that uh, we consider for our design. So uh, as you all know, environmental impacts can both directly and indirectly affect pavements. They can change the material properties and also they can uh, produce thermally induced strain or stresses in the pavement. So MEPDG looks at the uh, indirect impact of environmental factors, how dynamic modulus of the asphalt is changing, how the resilient modulus of the uh, subgrade or base is changing because of uh, environmental impacts under the EICM, Enhanced Integrated Climatic uh, Module in the MEPDG. So thankfully now we have a better tool compared to ASHRAE 1993 to look at uh, climate and how it can change the material properties maybe with proper calibration of these models because as the name suggests, it's mechanistic and empirical. So there is still a component of empirical in MEPDG or PMED. Um, so hopefully using some projected climate data uh, designers and practitioners can look at the relative impact of climate change uh, on pavement performance, which is not really possible using Ashton 1993. So um, in the future slides, I'd like to quickly uh, go over like so some of the uh, proposed methods that can help designers and practitioners uh, understand uh, climate change effect on their pavement design. I'm not going through the details at all. This is just uh, showing you a high level insight about how probably climate change can be modeled in, in, in pavement uh, design. So we talked about projected climate change data, which is a, a very sophisticated and robust science. But thankfully, as I said, uh, we can implement those climate data in the MEPDG or PMED, Pavement Mechanistic Empirical Design. So, this software, which comes with the uh, guideline, allows us to do uh, so many sensitivity analysis as well. So you can play with, with uh, traffic, you can play with your uh, stiffness values and all that. So you can basically create many scenarios, uh, not just the climate, you can also change, as I said, many other contributing factors. So doing a sensitivity analysis using projected climate change data can provide you with a huge amount of data that can be used to analyze the climate change impacts. And neural network is probably one of the simplest way to analyze this huge generated data from the MEPDG, again, based on projected climate change. So I'm um, just going to quickly show you a case study city of Winnipeg in Manitoba, which is the capital city for concrete pavements. So this is case study uh, looks at a different analysis period, like a baseline, which is 1995 until 2020, uh, versus like a short term, medium term and long term future scenarios. Here you can see how uh, annual air temperature on average is going to change the precipitation and zero stress temperature. Uh, if you know from solid mechanics, it's a very important factor in uh, concrete. Uh, because it tells you how much stress is locked in uh, at that temperature to the pavement, uh, to the concrete layer. So in future, because of curling and warping, you definitely need that zero stress temperature to understand 
how much stress is, is uh, on the concrete layer because of curling and warping. So we did 972 cases of sensitivity analysis. Here you can see uh, the, the range of values that uh, we try to look at for, for a JPCP jointed concrete, uh, uh, jointed concrete pavement. Uh, there are uh, average annual daily truck traffic, uh, the thickness of the concrete, the thickness of the granular layer uh, and the modulus of the granular layer and the subgrade. Also, uh, some parameters were kept constant, uh, such as modulus of rupture, the CTE heat capacity, and, and the rest of the parameters, which we did not uh, try to change. So we consider a service life of 25 years, and here you can see how uh, faulting which is a very uh, important distress in concrete pavement. It's, it's the amount of uh, relative settlements that you have from two adjacent slabs, that, that's the joint faulting, how it can be impacted by uh, climate change in short term, medium term, and long term. So as you can see, joint faulting is expected to increase uh, as we go further in future. Also here you can see how different parameters like thickness uh, of the concrete of the base and uh, how traffic and the modulus of the subgrade can, can play a role in, in faulting. Also a slab cracking, we looked at the slab cracking and we, we, we noticed that probably slab cracking is going to be reduced a little bit uh, in light of uh, climate change because uh, the interaction between permanent curling and warping I talked about uh, zero stress temperature and climate induced curling and warping uh, resulted in a little bit of less slab cracking uh, under all these uh, scenarios here. Here again, uh, how different factors contribute to cracking. You can see uh, different parameters here. Not going to go uh, really in details about these, but I just wanted to show you how we can utilize those generated data 972 cases in order to develop some neural network models because not all the transportation agencies really have access to MEPDG. It's, it's a very, um, I mean, first of all, there are so many parameters which are needed to run an MEPDG model. Most of the transportation agencies do not use MEPDG uh, routinely. And it's, as I said, very difficult to simulate a pavement using MEPDG. So probably developing um, an ANN model can help them understand for a range of parameters that they deal with in their region or in their municipality, what is the expected relative impact of climate change based on this simple ANN model uh, so that they don't really need to go back to MEPDG and run uh, all, all the scenarios from the scratch. So here we used uh, ANN model structure to probably look at uh, some, some prediction models. Here you can see uh, different uh, data sets, training, validation, testing. We had 70% of the data assigned for training, 15% for validation and 15% for testing of the models. And here you can see some of the results of those ANN models. So as you can see, Pretty promising results were obtained from these ANN models, meaning that uh, these ANN models uh, could probably predict the effect of climate change on, on the performance using the data generated from MEPDG slash PMED. So that's a, a step forward in, in looking at a climate change impact study because uh, most of the studies which are being done around the world are mainly qualitative. So it's very important for practitioners to really quantify the effect of climate change on, on pavement uh, performance, because as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's very sophisticated and robust given the interaction between temperature, humidity, water table, frost, and all that. So probably qualitative analysis is not sufficient. So there is a need for more mechanistic analysis and uh, coupling it with artificial neural network and other machine learning techniques out there. And as you know, uh, it's a huge science. It's, it's evolving 
on a daily basis. And there are new algorithms out there that can help us really uh, correlate payment performance uh, with different climatic factors. So with that, I'll just to conclude here that in this uh, research or in this case study, we looked at how joint faulting and a slab cracking can be impacted by climate change for JPCP. And sensitivity analysis in the MEPDG, it's, it's a very useful thing because it can generate a huge amount of data for us under uh, climate change scenarios. And we use neural network and it really uh, provided us with some uh, promising results to predict faulting and a slab cracking. With that, I'm uh, going to open the floor for questions. I understand that the questions will be at the end of the session, but this is an exciting uh, photo I saw from Sao Paulo's uh, runway in uh, March. So first, uh, I mean, I thought maybe this is like a heavy aircraft that really caused uh, this, this huge hole in the pavement. But uh, later on, I realized that it was just a lightning strike. So there are so many environmental factors out there that need to be taken into account maybe. Uh, as I said, uh, climate is changing uh, in a very fast uh, pace. And it's so important to really look at different uh, variables for pavement design. So thank you very much. I'll stop uh, here and pass it to Professor Benjamin.